Today we're building something that we wanted to own for a long while. This is a submarine that can swim by itself. Please come back. I think it's the most challenging thing we've built so far. And that's because it turns out that achieving autonomy is really hard for a couple of reasons. <laughs> For the past six years, we were only building underwater drones that needed to be operated manually. You use this controller with joysticks to move it in all directions. Now, with an autonomous drone, we should be able to just throw it into the water and let it do its thing. It should be able to travel at least a distance from our city to this peninsula and scan the sea bottom along the way in search of shipwrecks and lost cities. Secondly, in order to do that, this submarine will need to know its own location. And GPS doesn't particularly work underwater, in fact, not even a little bit. Also, there's a third reason autonomy is difficult. This distance is hundreds times larger than any of our drones have done in the past. We need to build it such that it can work for a lot of hours non-stop and be ultra-reliable, because if we lose it at any point, it's lost forever. This will be a three-part series about this autonomous submarine, and in this video we'll figure out how to build it from scratch and then take it for its first autonomous swim. So let's start with the long-distance problem. The drone will need a lot of batteries to last a long while, something like 12 hours. Batteries are very heavy, but thankfully the mass doesn't affect the top speed of the drone. With a large mass it will just accelerate slowly, just like a big ship, and that's okay. However, if we have more volume of the batteries, we somehow need to avoid creating additional drag. Specifically, the more frontal area the drone has, the more drag it creates. But there's a good way of packing it up so that the frontal area of the drone stays small while having a lot of volume inside. It's a tube. And yes, it seems like most submarines have this shape. Even airplanes are like that if you cut off the wings and replace people for batteries. Theoretically, we can make this tube as long as we like and it doesn't make it less hydrodynamic, although then turning it around will be harder. We will seal our batteries and the rest of the electronics inside of this aluminum tube, but we will have to extend it a little with what we call a steering module. We printed it on Prusa XL, which Prusa gave us for this video. It's very large and has 5 extruders, which makes for very fast multicolor prints, like this one. Because we don't want people to think this drone is a bomb, especially if we lose it, we added this text. So what is the best way to steer a tube? We want to keep it energy efficient for long missions, so we prefer the minimum amount of motors possible. It turns out that you can steer the drone very well with just one motor, which propels it forward, and the three servos, which move the fins. Here's how we scientifically arrived at the optimal design of these fins. I just took a picture of a shark's fin. I mean, I, I found a picture of a shark's fin, this one, <laughs> and I just stole the design. <laughs> so I think that this should work. I mean, nature can't be wrong. That's true. Uh, I okay. know, I, we need to ask a shark, honestly. <laughs> we printed them in two sizes because we just don't know how big they should be. The fins will enable the drone to rotate in every axis. You move these two to change pitch, all three to roll, and also all three to change yaw, but moving this fin on top in the opposite direction. By the way, these are waterproof servos from China, and they look awesome, but they actually didn't turn out to be very reliable, and it caused a major problem, which I'll talk about later in the video. We'll propel the drone with this big thruster from Blue Robotics. They sell a lot of components for underwater drones with very good quality. For example, these motors, enclosures or penetrators for cables. We even link this T500 thruster in the description if you'd like to buy it yourself. It's an affiliate link. And Peter? Yes? You can also make it compact. <laughs> 
but this looks much more like a bomb now for some Now here's a surprisingly tricky part. Because of that weight of the motor and the servos in the back, if we put it in the water it will pitch up or tilt back. So we need to add a ton of buoyancy foam in the back. That's what this space is for. These are waterproofed connectors which work with these custom keys, one to turn on the drone and second to turn on the mission. You can also use these to communicate via Ethernet and charge the drone. Here's a spot for a pressure sensor to measure depth. The cables connect to a polycarbonate end cap with penetrators. And then we connect the entire flange that will hold the aluminum pipe to the steering module via this 3D printed ring connector. And here's the pipe. It can be locked in place using this locking cord. On the other side it's exactly the same connection. And on top of that goes this dome which you've already seen. At last the fins which we printed already. This hull design is one of the simplest we've built, but is great for long distance missions. It has space for a lot of batteries, it's very hydrodynamic, even more than our CPS-5 design, and doesn't use a lot of energy to move and steer. Additionally, we can easily upgrade it with sensors such as a sonar for scanning the sea bottom. This is our end goal, but first we need to make sure it works without any upgrades. Now remember, ultimately we don't want to have any connection with the submarine, which means it needs to make its own decisions. But in order to do them, it somehow needs to know where it is. It will know its depth thanks to the pressure sensor we installed, but what about its position on a map? Since the GPS doesn't work underwater, instead of looking up for satellites, we could look down at the sea bottom. Since the water can be very murky, instead of using cameras, we could use sound. And there are sensors which do exactly that. It's called a DVL, a Doppler Velocity Log. It can determine your speed relative to the seabed by looking at how sound frequencies change. If you know your speed and your initial location, you can more or less figure out how your location changes over time. However, we can't really afford a DVL yet, since one of the cheapest ones on the market starts at $8,000. We will hopefully use it in a future video. Instead, we came up with an idea of placing the GPS on a buoy, which will be attached on a short tether to the submarine. The difference in its horizontal position while the drone is dragging the buoy will be something like 3 meters, which is completely acceptable. Unfortunately, that means that we can't swim very deep for now, but it will be good enough for testing. We decided to print the buoy in one piece and make it as big as it is possible on the Prusa XL. It's huge. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the print. The GPS goes into this waterproof box and then attaches on the very top of the buoy. The other side of the cable goes into this hole in the drone and then into the aluminum pipe. Awesome, so now we have the localization problem sorted out. By the way, let us know in the comments if you can think of any other cheap solutions. Now we can finally get to the part where we make this thing autonomous. This will be the first time we programmed anything like this. Okay, so Peter has spent about a week working on this code and this is what he came up with. Okay, so the main program that runs on this drone basically runs on the Raspberry Pi computer. If, for example, I'm here and the target is here, mm -hmm. then the uh, and the north is here, then the desired angle is basically minus 45 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. okay. and, and that's it. So this is the entire code that reads the GPS, mm -hmm. right? And then basically calculates the angle to the next waypoint and then just sets the, the yaw to the correct value. Here, calculate distance and bearing, that's the function. And the other command that's set to the drone is the uh, pitch at which the drone should be. So the drone mm -hmm. swims a little bit like an airplane, right? So mm -hmm. to, to make the drone swim deeper, you need to pitch it down. Mm -hmm. And to make it swim up, you need to pitch it up. If you need to be at four meters, 
and the drone is at two meters, then it needs to be pointed down, right? Okay, I see. And that's it. And then it sends these high level commands like the target yaw, the target pitch, mm -hmm. uh, and everything to the pix hook. Pix hook is basically like the main brain of the, of the drone. And um, it basically can figure out how to make the drone rotate to a specific angle in all axes. Okay. It's, it's kind of magic. If this is the brain, then what, what's this? I, maybe that's like uh, God or something, I don't know. <laughs> of course, there's a couple of other components that need to be in the electronics. So let me quickly design a way to fit them all. So here's the bottom layer, here's the Raspberry Pi and the Pixhawk, and also a Wi-Fi router for uploading missions wirelessly. We can slide it onto these rods, and then the battery. It's a free S18P configuration, if you're wondering. It does look like a bomb. Okay, I think we connected everything, and now we connect, can connect the battery. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Before we go test the drone, let's see if the servos rotate correctly. Okay. Yes, it makes sense. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it makes sense. This is the CPSA. A stands for autonomous. And now we should go test it. Spoiler, it's not the end of our challenges with this thing, it's not that easy. We had a good reason for choosing this spot where there's a lot of ships traveling non-stop. All the legs are frozen. We drew a short loop using a couple of waypoints on this river and inputted the coordinates to our program. Even though we have the buoy, using which we can always tell the location of the drone, at this stage we still don't want to risk losing it. So for our first autonomy test, we will attach an additional tether. We can use it as a leash, and secondly, we can monitor what exactly the drone wants to do. But of course, it didn't immediately work as expected. First problem is that it doesn't really want to turn right or left. If it does, the turn radius is ginormous. Also, we realize that this close to the sea, the water is slightly salty, which increases the buoyancy of the drone, and we need to make it heavier. By now, it was already getting dark. Whoa. <laughs> That's a big ship. So we came back the next day. Another day, I think they're onto us. We decided to swap the fins for the bigger ones and it did help with the turn radius. The drone could actually travel from waypoint to waypoint. However, even though it was heavier, we couldn't really go down when we wanted. And also, it was really slow. We theorized that it could be because the program turns the fins too much. At a certain angle, instead of the fins turning the drone, they stall, and they just start to work as a brake. We could limit the turn angle to something like 30 degrees or so, which should prevent stall, hopefully. However, while taking the drone out of the water, we encountered a major issue. Just kidding, the police didn't care. The issue was worse. The one servo on top was completely blocked. After inspecting it closely, we realized that the small motor inside was burned. We would need to wait weeks for a new servo, so we had to find a very quick solution. Instead of this servo, we'll use this motor. Yes, and, and we'll attach it here at the very front. So we can change the yaw, the drone can turn like that, and these servos can turn the drone like that. It's slightly cursed in my opinion, but it is cursed. let's get to work. So we basically changed the entire steering of this drone in a couple of hours. The benefit of this solution is that the drone will be able to steer left and right while not moving forwards. It will be slightly less hydrodynamic, but hopefully not too much. Nice. Okay, it's ready, but before we go to the first successful autonomous mission, I hope you enjoyed this building process. We may create a more detailed course on how to build this drone yourself, so if you're interested in that, let us know in the comments or via email. For now, if you'd like to go through a similar building process yourself, here's a quick news story about our 3D printable drone, the CPS-5, which by the way we tested to be even faster than the autonomous drone. 
Last year in the Belgian Navy Defense Forces, Chinook built his own CPS-5. And no, from what I know, he doesn't use it as a bomb. Although in his own words, he translated the video, I've received a budget from the Navy to remake it again and add several improvements so it could be practically usable for my department. This video was in Belgian news. The whole of the ship may be inspected to see if there are any technical issues or sabotage with mines. And by the way, look at what they have here. This looks like an autonomous drone to me. So yeah, now I can say this. If you'd like to build a drone used by the Belgian military yourself, you can do that by signing up to our CPS-5 course, just like Chinook. We've developed this course over the past couple of years, and actually a lot of beginners who have never done anything like this before are building these drones by themselves, and then using them for their own missions. So, after watching this video, go to cpsdrone.com and sign up for a free training on how to get started with building CPS-5 yourself. The link is in the description. Okay, now we can go to the autonomy test. A lot of traffic today. Yeah. <laughs> We've limited the angle at which these fins steer up and down, and so we hope that it should be successful at keeping the depth of about 2 meters. That means that we shouldn't see the drone anymore, only the buoy. Let's start! Okay. The mission path is still the same, so relatively close to the shore. Just to wait for the meter. Okay, it stopped. Really oh yeah, and it's, I think it's turned. Oh no, 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 oh. <laughs> no. No. Oh no. wait. <laughs> hey wait, it swims into the shore. No. No, no. Wait, wait, it's, it's, it's going good. Okay. <laughs> All right, we need to go, man. Yeah, yeah, we need to go. Okay, but we're at 1.18 meters, like spot on. Like the depth is, is kept like really well, uh -huh. although it does not go, go, does not reach the two meter mark. Okay, I see. Then it turned around and swam against the current. So finally, we've completed the mission. We definitely need to upgrade the buoy to something more stable. And we think that keeping the perfect target depth could be fixed by detaching this long tether, since it adds a lot of drag. I could feel the drag myself just by holding it. So in the next video, it's time to cut the cord and go on a long distance mission. Subscribe to our channel to see part two. Don't forget to check out the free training on how to build the CPS-5 drone yourself. Thank you for watching. Okay, we're done here.